In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups, the police who investigate crime and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These are their stories. Honorable Judge Cluden is presiding. I'm the defender attorney. Uh, my partner is Carson Beck. Um, we're representing Donna Osborne and proving that it was a self-defense more than a manslaughter and just like murder in the second degree. Um, she was abused for over two years before she did the murder and she didn't have any way of leaving. Um, the abuse started for two years verbally and then it went more physical between um, different ways. And be like, no, good to go. he, he lied. <laughs> so, what did you say? Something about evidence? Uh, we're the people in question again. You were the two OBWs. Oh, that's a good one. And who's the other one that was Donna gets put away and I know the family because I am their family doctor delivered Chip their son and uh, that was delivered to him. Okay, would you ever say that Mr. Osborne would be angry after getting golf or angry at some of the finance company? Um, would you ever say that you think he would go home and take it out on Donna that you personally know of? Not that I know. And when you say good husband, you mean he bought her things. He made it. Bought her things, cared for her. She didn't have to work. She could stay home with the child and take care of him and his their child. Absolutely. That is all I have from her. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. Uh, so. I'm a deputy. I'm a deputy sheriff. Uh, I was the officer that responded to the shooting the night of Clinton Osborne's death. Okay. Um, I just have just a couple questions for you, um, Mr. Powell. Would you please give us some facts on the night that Mr. Osborne was killed that you have seen going to the situation? So I re was responding to a radio call at the Osborne residence. It was a shooting at the Osborne residence. I, I arrived there, uh, immediately pulled out my service revolver, and I started clearing the house, and got to the son's room, and Donna and her son were in the room with the revolver sitting on the nightstand, and she was sitting on the bed. Hey, did you ever know Clinton personally? No, I knew him as a golfer in the community, but never knew him. Okay. Did anyone ever talk about his anger issues in the golf course at all, since you know him as a golfer? I had never heard anything until just Mr. Crown's statement just now. Okay. Thank you so much. That's all I have. All right, defense, would you wish to cross-examine the witness? All right. And you, once again, you said it was just a civil dispute? Yeah, just a call. And Went there, like it sounded more like a disturbance than anything, just like noise complaint. Alright. And then you were met by Clinton Osborne at the door? Yes. Alright, and can you tell me uh, anything about how Donna was acting? Like I said, she was on the floor, pretty much, I, I don't know if I'd go so far to say as in tears, but definitely displeased. So on that night when you saw Clinton in the garage, uh, what what injuries did you appear to observe? Two bullet holes in the back. Just... Alright, and what was located around him? He had a box of dozen roses, uh, his letter to his Valentine, and a 
36 ounce Louisville Slugger baseball bat. And can you tell us where was that, that baseball bat? Right next to him along with the roses and the letter. Uh, in your statement it said that the box of roses were nearby, not next to him. Same as the nearby, next to him, baseball bat. I mean, right there. No further questions. No. Okay, the prosecution, do you wish to redirect the office? Hey, All right, well, thank you for your time. Please step down. I'm here as a witness because of my specialty in psychology and law. Um, I just have a couple questions. Do the stages of bad fight <coughs> syndrome line up with the killing of Mr. Osborne to you? No. Donna's statements to the family doctor explaining her injuries were simply false excuses used by her during the guilty stage. And by that time, she had gotten the job. She had reached the responsibility stage. Police responded to the Osborne home on February 7, 1991. Donna's response to the police inquiry about her cut forehead was that she had fallen. This is when she should, should have been in the enlightenment or responsibility stage. However, the statement was false and an excuse, which is characteristics of guilt stage. State your name and your relation to the case. My name is Jack Matthews. I'm a friend of Donna Osborne. All right. So, when did you first meet Donna? At MCC, January of 1991. All right. And how did you view Donna? I viewed her purely as a colleague. All right. When you and Donna met for coffee, what did you discuss? We talked about her progress in teaching. And then in your statement, it says you first met Clint on February 7th when he barged into the classroom. You and Donna were speaking. Is this correct? Yes. All right. How was Clint acting when he entered the room? He started acting territorial and grabbed her arm with a lot of force. He then let her out of the room. All right. What prompted you to call Donna later that night? She had forgotten her books in the classroom. And what happened when you called Donna? Donna answered, she, she sounded very distressed, and then I heard Clint in the background and the sound of a slap in the column. And how would you view Clint after these events? I see him as an abusive tyrant and an evil man. Um, what is your name and how do you have a relationship with this case? I am Lee Harris and I am the director of Options for Battered Women. Okay. Um, what does OBW service provide? We provide um, telephone hotline, group counseling for women and children, therapy for children, and temporary shelter and housing for 30 days. Um, what did Donna first, or when did Donna first call OBW? She first called on March 7, 1990. Um, what was reported the first time that she called on March 7? That her arm was broken due to being pushed down the stairs. Okay. Um, when was when was the second time she called? Set, second time she called was on November twenty third, nineteen ninety. Uh, what did she report? Two broken ribs by a golf club. Um, what injuries did she suffer? Oh wait. Uh, when was the third time she called? Was February 8th, 1991. Um, what did she report on the third call? That she had a head injury and that she got 12 stitches. Okay. Um, when was the fourth time that you received a call from Donna? February 12th, 1991. Uh, did you offer shelter to her after the fourth time she called? I did, but our shelter was full. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. So you claim that you offered shelter, but you didn't have room? 
I offered that there is other places that she was able to go to or ask her friend. So she was able to leave. She was able to get out of the situation she was in. Yes. No further questions. Members of the jury, I am representing the people of the state of New York in this case. I have intended to prove that Donna Osborne has committed a second degree murder and at least the first degree of manslaughter. Let me remind you of the key facts this case has presented in court. Two bullet holes in the back. She could have left. She had every opportunity to leave, but she took the route to kill him. The past days you have heard from my witnesses, Lynn Johnson, Leslie Crown, Chris Powell, and Claire Osborne. They have all shown how Donna could have left, but she chose the route to kill her husband and father of, to her own child. Please find the defendant guilty in the second degree murder, and if not, at least the first degree of manslaughter. Donna was able to leave, but chose two bullets in the back as her route out. Why did she not leave when she had multiple chances? Why did she not, why did she have to shoot him when she could have left and ran away with her friend, Jack? Why didn't she use the help that was offered to her multiple occasions, but instead she chose the route to kill her husband and father to her own child? That's it, John. Thank you. Does the defense have a closing statement prepared? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed. Throughout this case and many others like it, there seems to be an untrue opinion in the minds of all involved that a, a victim of domestic abuse often has a choice or an escape from the trap that they've been put in. Donna was specifically put in a situation where she had no car, no friends, no connections to get out of where she was at. She was four miles from the nearest town and there was no way she could ensure 100% safety if she left the house. One thing we all have to realize is the horror a person must feel when the person they've taught themselves to love turns against them and wishes to cause them harm. The question we all need to ask ourselves is what we would do if we were put in the awful position that Donna Osborne was put in. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen of both the court and the jury, I'll speak directly to the jury as it's time for final instructions. I'd like to thank both counsels for their closing statements. Okay, jury, it is now time you have heard the facts that have been presented, and now you have to make your decision. There are three decisions that we ask you to make. First, you must determine if the defendant, Donna Osborne, is guilty of murder in the second degree. Second, you must determine if she is actually guilty of manslaughter in the first degree, or if she is not guilty. Go now, have your discussion. When you have reached a decision, inform our court. Bailiff, will you please lead the jury to their deliberation? You may be seated. Court is back in session. I have been informed by the jury that we have a verdict. Okay, this is the case of New York or North Dakota versus Donna Osborne. Jury, have we reached a verdict? Yes, we have, Your Honor. How do you find the defendant? We had to find the defendant guilty of manslaughter. Okay, thank you very much. Donna Osborne, you have been found guilty of manslaughter in the first degree. Bailiff, will you please apprehend the defendant? Sir. 